Cementoblastoma by Amanda German, Emily Clare, Alec Molly, Carla Mija, and Bailey Peterson. Cementoblastoma is a rare, benign, mesenchymal odontogenic tumor that is defined by an excess growth of cementum or cementum-like tissues attached to the root of a tooth. These tumors are normally found in the second or third decade of life and do not appear to have a gender predilection. While cementoblastoma can be associated with any root, it is commonly associated with the first permanent mandibular molar. It is uncommon that a cementoblastoma would occur on a deciduous molar. It is most often discovered in a routine radiograph. Figures 1 and 2 show classic examples of cementoblastomas in panoramic radiographs. Cementoblastoma is a slow-growing solitary lesion that may eventually displace teeth and cause root resorption. It may also cause cortical expansion and perforation. The pulp of the involved tooth is vital, however, there is occasionally low-grade intermittent pain reported that can be relieved by anti-inflammatory drugs. In some cases, it can also attach to adjacent teeth and possibly resorb at that root as well. Figure 3 is an extraoral view showing a diffuse solitary swelling on the right side of the mandible on a 14-year-old patient. Figure 4 is an intraoral view showing expansion of the buccal cortical plate with obliteration of the buccal vestibule in the same 14-year-old patient. Figures 5 through 10 show a case from a 23-year-old Indian female whose chief complaint was a slow-growing, painless swelling of one-year duration. Figure 5 shows the lesion intraorally as an oval, bony swelling on the left side of the hard palate that extends from the left canine to second molar region, with one premolar missing on the arch. In Figure 6, a cross-sectional image at the level of the maxillary first molar shows a well-defined hypertense mass originating from the palatal root. In Figure 7, an axial section shows a cementoblastoma being apical to the furcation area of the first molar. This indicates that the mass is originating from the palatal roots. Figure 9 here shows the surgical enucleation of the lesion, including the removal of the involved teeth. The root of the second molar was resorbed along the lateral aspect of the lesion. The excised specimen was yellowish-white, round, had a granular texture, had a diameter of 20 millimeters, and was attached to the palatal root of the first molar. Finally, Figures 8 and 10 show the same patient after the lesion was excised. Cementoblastomas appear unique radiographically. They appear as radio-opaque masses that are well-defined and have a radiolucent halo surrounding it. They are often large, and they are always associated with the roots of the tooth. The lesions are commonly associated with molars and premolars. You can visualize radiographically the effects a cementoblastoma has on surrounding structures. These include root resorption, bony expansion, tooth displacement, obliteration of PDL space, loss of root outline, and invasion of the root canal. Figures 11 and 12 both show cementoblastomas associated with mandibular left first molars. Figures 13 through 16 are also radiographic examples. Figure 13 shows a cementoblastoma associated with tooth 19, and it causes the roots to become almost indistinguishable. Figure 14 shows a panoramic example of cementoblastoma located at tooth 31. Figure 15 shows a CBCT representation of a cementoblastoma, and figure 16 shows the same lesion from the axial view. The differential diagnosis for cementoblastoma should include periapical osseous dysplasia, or PCOD, hypercementosis, condensing osteitis, also known as sclerosing osteitis, and dense bone island, or idiopathic osteosclerosis. PCOT is most commonly found in the anterior mandibular region and is asymptomatic. The radiographic presentation of this lesion varies, from early lesions being radiolucent to mixed, to late lesions being mostly radioopaque with borders that are not well defined. PCOT lesions are normally smaller in size and they do not cause cortical bone expansion. With hypercementosis, there is no associated pain or swelling. This lesion is fused to the root like cementoblastoma is, but cementoblastoma presents more as a circular radiopacity at the apex, while hypercementosis presents as a radiopacity in continuation with where normal cementum is located. Hypercementosis is also commonly associated with hyperocclusion, Paget's disease, and hyperpituitarism. Condensing osteitis, also known as sclerosing osteitis, presents with an inflamed or non-vital tooth due to periapical abscess. The radioopaque area, which is typically centered around the involved root, does not have a radiolucent rim surrounding it. Dense bone island or idiopathic osteosclerosis is always asymptomatic and is not fused to the root of the tooth. 
There is also no radiolucent rim surrounding this radio-opaque lesion. Treatment options for cementoblastomas are fairly straightforward. Extraction of the associated tooth with a complete excision of the attached mass. After removal of the tooth and attached mass, gradage is recommended to decrease the rate of recurrence. Recurrence and continued growth are possible if excision is incomplete or the recurrence rate is as high as 37.1%. Prognosis is usually excellent in cases with complete removal of tooth and attached tumor. Figure 21 shows the extracted molar tooth with the associated cementoblastoma. Figure 22 shows an excised tooth and lesion radiographically. Here are our references, as well as our image citations. Thank you.